Hi, I'm Amir Hossein Mirza Bozort and in this video I want to talk about how to resolve time increment required is less than the minimum specified error. This is the table of content. I will talk about how the Abacus standard solver choose the time increment size, errors due to convergency issues, decrease of time increments due to cutbacks, time increment required is less than the minimum specified, easy way for resolving the error, general solutions for resolving the error, and final solutions for resolving the error. I want to talk about how the Abacus standard solver choose the time increment size. This is a picture of a static general step settings and this is the incrementation tab. In the first increment, time increment size is equal to the initial value of time increment. In the other time increments, time increment size is chosen between minimum and maximum values of increments automatically. Minimum value of time increment, maximum value of the time increment. Abacus standard solver has two main errors that arise due to convergency issues. They are too many atoms made for this increment and time increment required is less than the minimum specified. Actually, for resolving these errors, all of the settings of the model in all of the Abacus CAE modules must be checked because using incorrect settings in each module can lead to convergency issues. Now I want to talk about decrease of time increments due to cutbacks. When we are using Abacus Standard Solver for simulation, in each increment, Abacus Standard Solver select a time increment size for solving nonlinear equation. This is the first attempt. If the iterations are successful, then Abacus Standard Solver starts to solve the next increment. But if the iterations are not successful, Abacus Standard Solver makes the first cutback. Then Abacus Standard Solver starts the second attempt. In the second attempt, the time increment size is equal to a quarter of the time increment in the first attempt. And then Abacus Standard Solver starts to solve nonlinear equations. If the iterations are successful, then Abacus Standard Solver starts to solve the next time increment. And if the iterations are not successful, Abacus Standard Solver makes the second cutback. And then it starts the third attempt. In the third attempt, time increment size is equal to a quarter of time increment size in the second attempt. And it starts to solve nonlinear equations. By default, maximum number of cutbacks is 4 and maximum number of attempts is 5 that can be increased. Here you can see the decrease of time increment due to cutbacks in each attempt. First atom, then we have first cutback, then second atom, then we have second cutback, then we have third atom, then we have third cutback, then we have fourth atom, and then we have fourth cutback, and finally we have fifth atom. We set minimum value of time increment in the incrementation tab of the static general step. And I explained that time increment size of the ith attempt is equal to the time increment size of the first attempt divided by 4 to the power of i minus 1. And if time increment size of ith attempt is less than minimum value of time increment, we will face the time increment required is less than the minimum specified error. Actually, 5 is the default value for 
maximum number of attempts in each increment. You can increase it to larger values like 10, 15 or even 30. Now I want to talk about easy way for resolving the error. For resolving minimum time increment error, the first way is to use a small value for minimum value of time increment. For example, we can use 10 to the power of minus 10 or 10 to the power of minus 15. This is an easy way for resolving this error. If some settings in your model lead to convergence issues, this way cannot resolve the problem and finally you will face the mentioned error. Actually, there is no general solution for resolving the error. Even in the simplest problems, the settings of each module must be checked. In the next slide, some of the important settings that must be checked have been considered. For example, in the property module, if you have defined damage for traction separation laws, like quad is damage, you must define damage stabilization cohesive. When you define damage stabilization cohesive, an artificial damping is introduced to the model. By adding artificial damping, Abacus Standard uses fewer iterations and attempts for solving the problem, so the speed of the simulation increases. The best value for viscosity coefficient is 10 to the power of minus 5, and if you increase the value of this parameter, the accuracy of the simulation will decrease. If you are using a static general step, you must define automatic stabilization. When you define automatic stabilization, an artificial damping coefficient is introduced to the model. In problems that include local instabilities, by adding artificial damping coefficient to the problem, some of the convergence issues will be solved. If you have defined contact interaction in your model, you must consider several points. In some simulations, changing the contact definition method from surface to surface to general contact can help the simulation to be converged. In the definition of surface to surface contact, master surface must belong to the stiffer material, and the stiffer material must have larger elements. In some simulations, if a small sliding happens between the contacting surfaces, tight constraint can be used instead of contact interaction. Before using this solution, be sure about the relative displacement of contacting surfaces. For example, in bolt connections, if a load larger than the design load is applied, large relative motion will happen. This is a picture of bending test simulation. This is the test specimen and this is the roller. We usually define the roller as a rigid part. So it is a stiffer than test specimen. So it must be the master surface in the definition of surface to surface contact. So we must define larger elements on the roller. Here you can see that I have defined larger elements here. And these elements are smaller than these elements. Sometimes convergence issues are related to the settings of mesh module. Here several points are considered. In some models with large bending deformation, use of second order elements instead of first order elements may resolve the convergence issues. As second order elements have mid nodes, they can undergo more bending deformations. In stress concentration regions, small elements must be used. For example, around the holes, at the crack tips, contacting regions, and loading regions, more elements must be used. In the problems with large volumetric deformations, mesh pattern has direct influence on the convergence issues. In these problems, special mesh patterns must be used according to the deformations. This is a picture of compression test simulation for a hyperelastic cylinder, and I have modeled the problem in the axisymmetric space. This is the axis of symmetry, and these are rigid parts, and this part is fixed, and this part will move and compress the hyperelastic cylinder. Here you can see that by moving of the top part, the 
hyperelastic cylinder is compressed and in these two regions we have excessive distortion. Excessive distortion in these elements makes convergency issues and the simulation cannot be completed because of errors. In this picture, I have changed the mesh pattern to this special mesh pattern. And here you can see that the hyperelastic cylinder is fully compressed without any excessive distortion. Here we have a crack and I have used a smaller elements in the crack tip region. This will increase the accuracy of calculated stress and strain fields. Now I want to talk about final solution for resolving the error. Each of the abacus solvers has their own limitations. According to the limitations of abacus standard solver, in some problems, even by applying all of the related mention points, the convergency issues cannot be solved, so we must change the solver from abacus standard to abacus explicit if possible. This is the final solution and must not be used at the start of the procedure of resolving convergency issues. Here we have abacus standard steps and here we have abacus explicit steps. If you are using a static general step or dynamic implicit step and you are facing convergency issues, you must change them to dynamic explicit step. And if you are using coupled temp displacement step and you are facing convergency issues, you must use dynamic temp disp explicit. You can contact me by using Telegram or WhatsApp or you can send email to me. We can have one-on-one -on -one tutoring on the AnyDesk, WhatsApp, and I can make a special videos to your order. We can perform high-quality simulations according to your thesis, exercises, and industrial projects. Thank you so much for watching this video. Goodbye.